Building a fire is one of the most essential survival skills. It has a lot of different applications. It can boil water to make it safe to drink. You can also use it to prepare your food. It makes a great signal. The smoke is visible during the day. The light is visible at night. And you can also smell the smoke from a long distance away. You can use it to harden wood to uh, better your tools. You can also use it, it also has first aid and hygiene applications. Let's talk quickly about what type of materials we're going to need to make our fire. We have three basic categories of material we're going to be talking about. You have tinder, you have kindling, and then you have your fuel. Now your tinder is anything that takes a spark. It can be natural and it can be man-made. There's several different types of natural tinders, there's several different types of man-made tinders. Kindling is anything that burns quickly and it's going to burn long enough to catch your fuel on fire, which your fuel obviously is something that's more slow burning. When you're thinking about tinder, kindling, and fuel, what you need to think about is your tinder obviously needs to be something that's fluffy. When you think of your kindling, you remember three things. Remember matchsticks, pencils, markers. Those are the three size, uh, three size kindling that you're going to use. And then for fuel, you're looking for anything that's basically the size of your wrist or larger. Okay, so now that we've got all that gathered up and we've separated it into the piles, we know what we're working with and it's easy to find so that when we start throwing sparks or using matches or using lighters, which may be a precious commodity when you're in a survival situation, actually they are going to be a precious commodity in a survival situation, you need to have everything prepared before you ever throw that first spark. And I told you before that we would only go into four piles. We have our tinder, which is matchstick size, give or take, it doesn't have to be exact. We have pencil size and we have magic marker size. Keep in mind it's close enough. The, the idea is that the smaller stuff is going to catch better and once the smaller stuff gets going it gets the larger stuff going and so on and so on until you're up to burning fuel. Now luckily here where I'm at I have a lot of paper birch, white birch. That burns really good. It's a good hardwood. It even burns when it's wet. It also makes a great kindling and I was lucky enough I made a fifth pile if you'll look over here that has birch bark, which birch bark in a survival situation is pure gold. I was also able to find some cedar bark, which works really well. So this is what we'll call our natural tinder, tinder pile. The best advice that I can give you about gathering your materials, one, make sure you gather it before you ever throw a spark, and two, when you think you have enough, you need five times more. Now each of these methods of laying a fire has its advantages. So I'll talk about those as I'm building them. But I want to quickly show you how to build these and then give you some of those key points. First, we'll start off with the teepee fire, or the cone fire as it's called in some places. To construct it, basically all we're going to do is we're going to take our larger kindling and we're going to construct a teepee with it. It doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to stand up. Basically all I'm doing is constructing a teepee out of sticks. Once that gets established, it's a lot easier to just throw them up on there without knocking the whole thing down. Like I said, I'm using my largest size, my magic marker size, kindling for this because my smaller kindling as well as my tinder is going to go in the middle and that's going to burn long enough to get these outer portions of the teepee going and then of course as that gets going and I get more of a base of coals I can start adding my larger fuel and that'll get me through the day or through the night One of the great things about this fire and this method of laying a fire is it works really well whenever it's wet. The reason is as long as your tinder is dry or if it'll actually still work when it's dry or when it's wet, is all this, tin, all this kindling on the outside is going to start drying out and as it dries out and heats up it's going to fall towards the inside and it basically is a self-feeding fire at that point. 
And as you can see, I purposely left this opening over here. Obviously, this would be on the side that I'm facing, but I did it for the camera just so you could see. But obviously, this is where I'm going to put my tinder and my smaller matchstick, matchstick size kindling and then eventually the pencil size kindling so that I can get this fire going. But this is a teepee fire, also known as a cone fire. This is a method of fire laying. Now for the lean-to method, I need to take this three-foot stick that I just found, this green stick, and I need to drive it into the ground, and I need the point to be facing into the wind. On a day like today, there's not much wind out here, so it's not going to make all that much of a difference, but if you can tell which way the wind is going, you want to put the tip of the stick towards the wind. That way it's, uh, the, the wind is feeding your fire. But in this case, I'm just going to place it inside here. Now, once I've got it in there, that gives me something to start laying my marker size kindling on there again. And again, this is another great technique for if it's wet outside because that marker size larger kindling is going to be on the outside. And as it dries, it's going to fall towards the inside and feed your fire. So I'll go ahead and construct one of these real quick and show you how it's done. The next technique that I'm going to show you is the log cabin technique for laying a fire. Now this is very similar to the pyramid technique. I still put the fuel on bottom, I still work my way up in size as far as kindling on top, and then I put the tinder in the actual middle of the pile. Um, so this is another great, great technique for starting a fire. As I work my way up, I go a little bit larger. I'm on to the matchstick size kindling. And I don't want to build this too high in the beginning because I'm going to use this center as the place to put my actual tinder and my match size kindling. So that's probably high enough for our purposes now. But this is the log cabin method of fire laying. Fuel on the bottom, it's great uh, as far as getting a fire started. Your kindling goes on top and it builds up in size. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and prep my fire tab. By fluffing up one end of it. I'll leave the other part together because that actually burns more like a piece of kindling. It doesn't burn so quick. Uh, but I wanna get enough surface area and enough fluff for it to actually catch a spark. So I'll do about halfway and I'll kind of shred that up, make it fluffy. Basically trying to turn it into like a cotton ball. Okay, so that's ready. And then I've got just a pile of leaves. Uh, with some birch bark mixed in just because I like that and it's available. And I'm just going to rough that up real nice. And this is going to be my tinder bundle. Now the way I like to do it is go ahead and set that up. And create an opening. I'm going to take my fire tab and I'm going to put it right on the inside. And that's what I'm going to throw sparks into. So let me go ahead and move the camera real quick so you can get a better view. Now this is where it becomes very important to uh, to pull pull your ferro rod away from the tinder bundle rather than push your striker towards because you don't want to knock it out of the way. So let's see if we can get this going. We've got some going. We'll place that in the center. A 
of it. That's looking good. Now I'm going to take my matchstick size stuff. I'm going to add some. You don't want to smother. You want to give it a little bit of time to get going. Birch is already taken off. Add the rest of my matchsticks. Once that's going, I'm going to go ahead and start adding some pencil size. Throwing it right in the middle, kind of like a wood stove. And what I like to do is take the marker size and just throw it right on top, make sure there's air that can get through. And there you have it. Survival fire in just a couple of minutes. Well, we appreciate you watching, and until next time, stay safe and stay warm.